All right, so today we are going to check the anode on the hot water heater. Um, you're supposed to check it every year. I put a new one in last April. I'm gonna check it today. Today's June the 9th. So we'll see how it goes. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to your utility panel. Make sure that both of your water heater switches are turned off. One is for electric, the other one is for gas. Then we're gonna work our way back to our utilities. We are going to make sure that the, the um, breaker is turned off of the water heater. There's also one for the DC. I do not know how to open these circuits. If anyone knows how, please let me know. It's just a little knob. I know when they, when they throw on their own, the white thing pops out. You just push it back in to reset it. But I don't know how to trip that breaker in its current position. Uh, you turn these off for a couple of reasons. Um, obviously you don't want it trying to generate heat while uh, you're doing this. Uh, you definitely do not want it trying to generate heat while it's empty. We're gonna be emptying the tank so we can take the anode out. If you have the electric um, element turned on, when the tank is empty of water, it will cause major damage. It'll break the water heater. Uh, and that's if you don't hurt yourself. Uh, and you absolutely positively don't want to open you know, anything in the hot water system that has a pretty high probability of spraying hot water all over you. Um, but now we're gonna head outside and we will start draining the hot water out of the hot water tank. Um, I almost forgot, one of the things I did do beforehand was I also ran all the hot water out of the sink. Uh, a lot of folks will say, well, you should have turned the hot water off, you know, and then let it cool down. It'll stay hot for a day inside the, the hot water tank. So, I mean, if you want to do that, turn your hot water off a day in advance and then hope it cools down over the next 24 hours. It'll probably cool down some, but um, what I know I don't want to do is open it and there'll be hot water in there. So I just, I run it until cool water comes out of the sink and I'll be going to drain the system now. All right, our low point hot and cold drains are over on the driver's side in the wet bay. We're gonna to get to the wet bay here in a second. One of the things I want to show you is the next thing we wanna do is turn our water off. These are typically regulated at 50 PSI. Right now we're at about 47 PSI. I don't know about you, but I do not relish the idea of trying to let that anode or loosen that anode from the hot water heater with 40 PSI of water pressure backing it up. So we're gonna come in here now. We're gonna find our hot water drain line. It's over here. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. You can hear there's a little bit of pressure still on the line, but that will drain out. The other thing I'll do is I'll go inside, I'll open the sink. That'll allow the entire system to drain out. Um, Cause with or without pressure, I also don't wanna go taking the anode out of the hot water heater and discover there's still hot water in it. So I'll go do that now and I'll see you in a second. Okay, so we're back here at the water heater. It is on the passenger side all the way at the rear. We have a six gallon water heater. I'm gonna take this, turn it, pull out, make it look, make it look very easy, fell right off. I must have lubricated it the last time I was in there. In the event, here's our water heater. I did open the hot water valve in the kitchen. It's gonna let the system drain. There's still six gallons in here. Some of it will drain, a lot of it won't. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the vent as well. That will also allow air in, let water drain out. So that's not a good thing. There's a little bit of rust in that. Our anode is down here. And here's our last switch. I showed you we had the, um, the AC breaker and the DC breaker. This is the last one you want to hit. We're going to turn that off. That way we don't have anything light up while we're in here. Okay. So I have my one and one sixteenths. Yes, it's an impact socket. I don't have one and one sixteenths inch standard sockets. I have every confidence it will work with my regular socket set. I come in here on the anode down here. And we're going to loosen it. Do not be surprised if there's still more water in here. 
do be surprised if it starts spraying out all over you. A little bit of water. A lot of minerals are coming out. If no one has told you what an anode rod does, it is a sacrificial element. The water it wants to attack everything that's part of the hot water heater. So what you do is you put an anode rod in there to be the sacrificial rod. This is actually in pretty good shape. Typically what most people find is just a little wire, just a wire left in here. But this actually has a lot of material left on it. I'm actually going to put it back in. Um, actually get the water out. I'm going to look for any more debris in the bottom of the tank. We'll rinse that out. If there's not, we'll go ahead and put it back together. And I'll show you how to refill everything. So, when we took the anode out, I did look up in here and I saw, remember we talked about the, the rust coming out of the top, saw a lot of mineral deposits in the bottom of the hot water tank. They make a little wand, I'm going to go look for it, I'll put a link in the video to a wand that actually goes up in here and rinses it back out. I don't have one, so we're just using the dredge jet setting on our, on our hose end and just rinsing it out, stirring it up, letting it drain out. This might take a minute, but that's what we're doing, going in here, and just stirring it up and letting it run out. It's going to take a while. All right, so for the first time in 31 years of marriage, I couldn't find plumber's tape. Luckily, the neighbors had some. So, we're gonna show you how to run this. One thing you do wanna do is you wanna make sure that you go with the thread of your joint, wrap it around. I could have cleaned the old stuff off, but it really won't matter. Um, you only need like two wraps of this, three, maybe four, but I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with three. More than that, you wind up with the joint just not working well. Pop that off. Just back in its case. Plumber tape's usually a lot bigger than this. This came with their new anodes i'll give you a picture of a new anode rod here in a little while i'll add that and i'll give you a link to where to buy that as well i'm going to take this our handy dandy socket stick it back in we're going to hand tighten it the reason you hand tighten it is you don't want to cross thread it like almost anything else you can't cross thread it if you if you try hard enough you don't want to do that we're going to just tighten it up with the socket. You're going to go until it's tight. That's pretty tight right there. And I'm going to go about a quarter turn more. What you do not want to do is grape ape this thing in here. If you grape ape it in here, you're probably going to break it. I'm going to shut our pressure relief. No, I'm not. I'm going to leave that open. That way we can fill the tank. We'll know it's full of water. We're going to go across to the other side. We're going to shut that hot water drain that I showed you earlier. And then I'm gonna ask Jennifer to turn the water on. See you in a second. Okay, Jennifer shut off the hot water in the kitchen sink. I shut off our hot water low point drain. She is going to go turn the water supply on. It's gonna immediately start filling with water. We're gonna wait until water comes out of our pressure relief valve we'll know the tank is full once it does that we'll go and back inside the house we'll go to every single faucet we'll turn open the hot water that way we'll know that the lines are free of air we'll know the tank is free of air then and only then when I've got water coming out of every faucet in the house without air blowing through it then we'll go back We'll turn our breaker on here. We'll turn the AC breaker on in the house. And if you want very hot water very fast, you'll go to the hot water switches I showed you earlier. You can turn on both the electric and the gas. 
but we're just gonna turn on the electric because we don't need it super hot super fast. If you turn them both on, it makes hot water faster. Obviously, you've got the electric and the gas both running, and then um, it just makes it faster. I don't need it. I don't want to use up any of my gas, so I'll just turn the electric on. Yep, Jennifer turned the water on. I doubt if you can hear it. I can hear it in there. It'll soon, well, six gallons from now, it'll be coming out of that pressure relief valve. We'll shut the valve. And then we'll definitely want to check this for leaks. Although we put it in tight and we put the plumber's tape on it, we still want to check that. If you have a leak, lather, rinse, and repeat. A watched pot does not boil. Apparently a watched water heater doesn't fill up either. Oh, look at that. As soon as I said it, we have water. You can hear air and water coming out. Get the last of the air out of the tank. Mostly just water coming out now. Go ahead and shut that. We're going to make sure that it stops leaking while Actually, what we'll do is we're gonna go inside, get the air out of the lines, we'll come back out here, and we'll check for leaks. You can see we did dishes earlier. I'm gonna to come to our kitchen sink and run hot water. It's pretty amazing that we already have hot water all the way to the sink. Come into the bathroom. And we have got, this will be odd because this, we, we put in a um, farm sink and when air gets in the line of this thing, it blows water everywhere. So that's why I'm putting my hand in front of it. Otherwise it'd blow all the way across the bathroom, which it will almost certainly do tonight when I go to brush my teeth. Now that I think it has stopped blowing air out, it'll probably do it at least one more time. Like I said, it'll do it tonight while I'm washing my face or brushing my teeth or something like that. It'll blow it all across the bathroom, all down me. Last but not least. All right, we're gonna let that go right there. Come back over here. Yep, more air. <laughs> between this sink in the bathroom and the shower head we'll probably be fighting with air in the lines for the next two or three uses all right so we are back we let the air out of the lines inside the house no leaks from our pressure relief valve no leaks at the anode. What I'll do is I'll check this again tomorrow. We'll let this dry out. I'm not even going to put the cover on it today. We'll let it dry out completely and I'll just come back and check for leaks. And I almost forgot. Now we're going to turn on this breaker. And we're going to turn on this breaker. And we're going to turn on this breaker. Again, just turning on the electric. We don't need to run both. Again, if you do run both, it will heat up the water faster. All right. I'll hope you learned something from that. I know when I started, um, you know, as is typical, didn't know anything about how most of this stuff worked. I will say I'm super lucky. I'm blessed. I have a dad, Robert Baker. He taught me a ton of stuff. My Uncle Din taught me a ton of stuff. My Uncle James taught me a ton of stuff. My grandfather taught me a ton of stuff. Um, and I just hope I can pass along as much as possible to, to you. If you guys have any questions about how some of these things work, hit me up in the comments and I'll uh, do my best to provide what I do now. Thank you.